G'day everyone out there in internet land, it's Anthony here at Moose Marine and um, back here in the workshop, there I am. <laughs> when I say workshop, I mean my, I mean my back room, just trying to get the focus, there we go. Today uh, we're going to have a real good overlook at the Garmin Echo Map 95 UHD. I do apologise about the focusing, I don't know how to make it stay focused. Mm -hmm. Not too sure if I've got that focus working. Kind of works, I think because it's trying to pick up me in the reflection. Anyway, because um, it's a Saturday and it's pissing now with rain outside, Let's make a video. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is just turn on my little power supply over here because I didn't have that turned on before. All right, while we're firing up, I'll just talk briefly a little bit about this system's physical case. So this is the unit here. It's on a quick release bracket, as you can see back here. Uh, I'll show you that later because if I take it off now, we'll turn it off. On the very back of the system, we have some plugs, we have our power cable, NEMA 2000 cable, we have our 12 pin connector, uh, sorry, um, transducer orange connector, and we have an RJ45 Ethernet connection for the Garmin Marine Network. Radio. Hopefully that's in focus somewhat. Cat cruising around here. Put this little spot right there. Alrighty, it's a nine inch diagonal screen. I'm going to get these numbers wrong, but it's 800 by 480, 600 by 480. I'll have to double check. Anyway, first thing you'll notice too is that it's touch screen and physical keys. And I just knocked the power. Sorry about that. So it's going to restart. I'll see if I can make it so the power cable doesn't move by putting something on it. That's me again, accidentally pulling the power out. I've only just got it sort of temporarily attached to my power supply over here. So, I've got the cat here. Do you want to go outside, dear mate? No? Inside, outside? I've got a cat who's not quite sure what to do. Uh, yeah, g'day, Matt. Yes, this is the uh, this is the UHD 95. Well, it's I was going to show you the box, but it's all the way down there. I'll show you that later. That's the screen cover that comes with it. Right, let's continue. So, physical keys. Physical keys are your power button, zoom in, zoom out, and these four quick saves. They sort of work a little bit like the favorite radio station presets in your car radio. So we can find pages that we use most often and assign a key to them. And then down the bottom you have your single micro SD card slot. These units here in Australia anyway come preloaded with Garmin's G3 blue charts which are Australia New Zealand wide. So you don't need to purchase a map card to have these function and that allows this free card slot for other uses. Say if you want to transfer waypoints, if you want to put in a topographic inland map card or a G3 vision map card for a few extra features, it just kind of keeps it free and it's held closed by a little magnet. So hopefully, I'm not too sure if it's should have working too well if you can see what the unit actually looks like doing this obviously on my phone <laughs> all right so when you first turn these systems on it will take you through a rather basic introduction setup so from here you select your country and region so we're going to go australia and our language i speak english do we want to store demonstration uh, not in this instance so i'm going to go off Choose OK to quickly set up the basic functionality. So we'll go through that process. What do we want to be? A powerboat? Or do we want to be a sailboat? We're going to get a powerboat. 
Uh, hi Moose, I have a 95 SV, the model before this. Would you expect the traditional sonar to be similar to the UHD unit? I'm running the standard transducer. If you have the previous generation, which was called the Echo Map Plus series, um, the traditional sonar is exactly the same. That's to say it's a high frequency wide beam chirp element. Uh, low power, but that hasn't particularly changed. What has changed with these UHD models is the um, side image or side view, down view, clear view. I get the terminology always wrong all the time. They're all basically the same thing, just different names. So I'll get into that in a second, but we'll continue on with just the setup firstly. So we're going to select the minimum safe depth for our boat. We're going to say 0.5 because it's just a small boat. And vertical clearance, 5 meters would do it. We've got some pretty big aerials. Collision alarm, if we have to worry about it, we'll just go 150 meters, one minute. And then it takes you to your home screen. So this is our home screen. We can customize it uh, a little bit. Um, but we'll go through what it has on uh, the beginning. So the start top left is our charts, full screen, sonar, frequently used, the ones we use most often, combinations of those charts and sonars and gauges, etc., Gauges, so if we have it connected to engine diagnostics, uh, fuel, water, any of those NEMA 2000 inputs. Our wireless active captain Garmin app, which will connect to our phone. And then we can go customize for a few more things. And down the bottom we have our standardized menu bar with back, navigational info, settings, waypoint mark, and menu. So when you're on this home screen... Um, if we press nav info, it will bring up this navigation information home screen, which allows me to then go to my waypoints, tracks, routes, boundaries. I can search for various waypoints, offshore services, which are things like fuel depots and how far away they are from me, etc. And I press the back button to always just go back one page, back again. Inland service is the same thing. This is some good stuff here, tides and currents. So I select that, I select tides, and I'll show me what's going on with my tides. So I can see that we're currently at this hypothetical time here. Um, or is it accurate? No, I should be hypothetical. And I can change date, change to a different tide station, for example. Go back, I can check out the currents and the speed of the currents. Uh, I can also go celestial to see the position of the sun and the moon. And I can go to the moon phase to see what the phase is. All of this is particularly accurate because it's all very, very easy to program this data in for hundreds of years into the future. So it's pretty handy to know. But from here, obviously, I can find my waypoints. I don't have any saved currently. So that's under nav info. Under settings, brings up our master system settings, and from here we can go into just about everything else. Under system, we can change our display settings, our backlight, if we want to have screen capture on off, the background graphic, if I want to change that, color mode, if I want to be in day and night. And you will notice that these guys here have this little dot up in the corner, and that's a light sensor. And it's probably actually picking up on this floodlight that I've got above me. But this little light sensor will pick up ambient lighting and adjust the brightness of the screen accordingly. So in daytime it will increase the brightness and at nighttime it will dull it. So if I put my thumb over that, if I actually press auto first, I put my thumb over that light sensor. It's probably not going to work because I said that. <laughs> Backlight. Oh, there we go. Google. Go back to auto mode. Okay, you'll see now that because I'm in automatic mode, as I've put my thumb over that light sensor, it thinks it's getting darker. So it's going to want to dim the screen so we don't get a lot of um, bright light. And if I take my thumb off and it thinks it's daylight again, especially if I shine this little overhead lamp at it again. Oops. 
you'll see the brightness will now start to go back up. So it's a cool little feature if you're cruising at night time and you just forget to do this. It will dim the screen and um, brighten the screen should you want to. Uh, the menu bar display, which is this bottom one, I can have it so it shows it or I can hide it. So it will disappear after a few seconds. I, I like to always display it because it's a bit of a prick to always get to if you have it disappearing all the time. Alrighty, yeah. Um, GPS status is pretty cool. We can turn on uh, the Galileo network of GPS satellites, which is the European Union uh, constellation. We can turn off differential position, which we don't really actually have in Australia, so we'll leave that off. And speed filters mostly used for yachts. Beeper, so we can have it so that it beeps when we press a button. We can have it so it beeps only for alarms or off. We're going to turn it off. Uh, auto power off, so if it's not used for a certain amount of time, we can just turn the system off. I'm going to turn the simulator on at the moment. Now it thinks it's night time, doesn't it? And I'm just scrolling up and down with my thumb here, by the way. Color mode. We want day colors, please. All right, cool. Communications. From here, we can set up NEMA 2000 uh, Marine Network, which is the Ethernet port at the back. So if we have it connected to a live scope, for example. Wireless devices. So if I connect it to an autopilot remote control or a, um, a, a trolling motor. Or your phone for that matter my vessel so from here we can set things like the offset of our keel especially for sailor boats calibrate wall speed uh, water speed calibrate fuel capacity add fuel if we fill up all that sort of stuff sea zone digital switching um, sea star digital steering as well which is new so it's pretty cool that we can now have sea star digital steering or electric steering it's pretty cool alarms obviously we can set a whole bunch of different alarms so the big ones are obviously going to be anchor drag so we can turn our anchor drag and say we want to know within about nine meters um, and our arrival alarm so if we arrive to our waypoint so we're going to say arrive at destination act whoops right there Activate by distance and activate once we reach 0 0.001 nautical miles in this instance. It will now beep when we get to our waypoint. Or come up with alarm, I should say. Sonar, so we can have it so it beeps at shallow water or deep water or fish. Never turn that, I'll just beep all the time. So that's pretty cool. And a front view alarm is actually pretty cool too. I'll let you know if you're running into a ground. AIS information to so automatic identification systems mostly used for this is unlikely to be used by most people who are going to use an echo map but it's pretty cool um, if you have an MOB device you can do a test for them as well so that's pretty cool to have all that built in radio um, I'll get back out of alarms for now units so we can change our units so I'm going to go system units to custom I want my depth to be in meters, obviously. Distance to be in kilometers. Wind speed in knots. Volume liters, temperature Celsius, vessel speed in knots. Elevation and PSI, so that's all cool. Time zones and automatic, so I'll just pick up the time from the GPS. Time format, we're gonna go 12 hour. Mat datum is 84, it's fine. Position format, hddd.mmm.mm. Cool, all right. So it's all looking good. Uh, navigation, auto guidance. So under our auto guidance, we can navigate around objects. Pretty cool. So we can set things like maintaining a preferred depth. So we want a minimum of uh, two meters. And we want to keep far away from the shoreline. Uh, pretty cool. Oh, so that's pretty much it then really there's other vessels that's mostly for is stuff right anyway so that was all under the settings thing cool let's check out some of the actual 
proper things that people are going to use these for. Let's go to charts. And under charts, we have three standard ones to choose from. Fishing charts, navigation chart, and perspective. These are the two that people are going to use the most. Navigation chart, blah, blah, blah. Navigation chart has uh, the most amount of navigational detail. So channel markers, depth markers, depth colors, that sort of thing. And I'll zoom over to Australia. It is noticeable the processing speed of this unit versus, say, the GPS map ones over there. So I'm going to put our little boat. We're going to be in Western Port. Should be able to move the boat there. Settle down, mate. No problem. I'm just going to see if I can move the simulator boat to this position. So I'm going to go home, settings, system, simulate, setup, set position. Hopefully you're all having a good weekend. And if you do have any questions, feel free to pop them in the messages down below. Simulator boat's gone right there. So enough money for travel. So now we should be Hastings. There we go. All right, cool. So when you're in your home navigation screen, you can see all our depth soundings, channel markers, and then depths based on colors. And then little notes, if we zoom in and out, those do change based on how much we can see or not see. If I want to go somewhere, I can just touch on the map and go navigate to, go to, and go to autopilot, cancel. And it'll now just navigate me to a destination. There we go, so you follow the yellow brick line. When I've moved off the boat, you can see I can't see the boat anymore, so I just press stop panning and it will lock the boat back in the center. Pretty cool, pretty easy. If I did that by accident or I don't want to go to that destination anymore, I can just press menu, stop navigation, and we're back to normal. If I touch on an icon, it can tell me a bit more information about it. So I can see port hand boy, touch that. It'll tell me what color it is, that it's a cylindrical boy, can style, the light flashes red, and it flashes quickly. So, pretty cool. So if you didn't know what something was, you can, you can see it on your map, you could get a bit more information from it. You can also measure the distances between places too. So if I'm here in the map, and I just want to know how far away is it to this entrance, I can just touch there. And if you just touch it, it will say up in the top corner that it's 1.16 kilometers or, and it's heading from you. But I can also go measure distance. And now I can actually move around to see what that distance is between a particular point. You see that little blue line there. I can actually set the reference point too. So if I go here, set reference point, and now from that point, Back here, I can say measure it across. I can see how far it is from the entrance to say this jetty over here. And I can see that's 2.81 kilometers. So I can measure distances that aren't attached to the boat. I can just pick two places and just move them around. And then I just press stop measuring to get rid of it. If I want to save a waypoint, I can just hit the mark button at any time. So I just hit mark. And it's created a waypoint. It defaultly would just go in numerical order with a base um, point until I change it. So I'll do another one. Press mark. We're up to number two now. I can go edit waypoint. If I press it quick enough, go name, change it to whatever I want. Moose Marine, you don't have as many character saving points, but 
that gets the point across. Done. Change the symbol. I like palm tree, so we'll give it a little palm tree. Pretty happy with that. So once all is done, press back. Press back. My little palm tree saved. Now I've got a few waypoints. You just see I'm, I've placed two waypoints now. So if I press nav info and hit waypoints, you can see there's the two that I just created. Now distance from me is not very far because I'm still on that spot. But what we'll do is we'll create a waypoint somewhere else. I can create a waypoint over here if I want, just by touching on an area. Create waypoint. Number three is the one that's just been made. Edit waypoint. Let's give it a different symbol. Let's give it a little picture of a... Um, it's a good symbol. Let's give it this little diving flag. And we'll change the name to dive. Dive number one. Done. Back. Back. So there's that little waypoint, dive one. I can touch that waypoint. I can hit dive one. And it tells me all about it. If I press back, if I just want to go there, I can just press navigate to, go to, and now you can, don't worry about autopilot if you haven't got it, it would just do a straight line between you and that waypoint. If I don't want to go there anymore, I can press menu, stop navigation. But now when I press my nav info, go to waypoints, you can see there's that dive one, and you can see how far away it is from me, and my bearing to it. Cool. Uh, hopefully, if you've got any questions on the Waypoint GPS side of things, feel free to ask us a, a question. Send it in the list below. Radio. Um, let's press Menu. So this menu will now bring up all my navigation chart menu options. So I've got Layers, Chart, uh, First Things First, Tides and Currents. Let's turn, oh, they are, let's turn them Animated, Navades, Let's turn our light sectors on so that will show me where the light's actually shining on the map. What else can we change? Restricted areas. All the restricted areas are on except for fishing. Let's turn them on. And commercial, we'll turn them on. No anchoring zones, turn them on. Green zones, turn them on. So the green zone's an important one. So now we know exactly where we can and cannot fish. Especially if you're up in Queensland. Uh, what else we got under the menu? Chart setup. Detail. We can change the detail of our map. So I can go up to most amount of detail. And get a bit more on the screen or least. So now we've got a few more. Is there any way you can allow it to have duplicate names for waypoints? So two waypoints of the same name. Uh, are, are you referring to which, which we which we can so if I press mark and I create another waypoint call it dive one done there we go no we can't so you can't duplicate waypoint names fair enough I suppose what you can do is obviously give them different symbols I will say um, that that is one of the really nice things I like about Raymarine. Raymarine has by far the best waypoint uh, consolidation system where you can have them arranged by groups. You can have different folders. So you can have on the screen just the waypoints for fishing or just the waypoints for diving. Um, unfortunately, Garmin hasn't got that. They might bring it out at some point, but at this stage they don't. So if we go back to my nav info, back to my waypoints, you can see, fortunately we can't group them at all. We can search and filter, but we can't have just groups shown. Uh, let's go back to our charts. Let's check out the fishing chart now though. So fishing chart, I'll just zoom in with the button over here. Fishing chart is similar to your traditional sonar, except it decreases the amount of navigational aids you have and increases the amount of contours you have. If I press menu, 
chart setup detail most amount of detail you can now see we get an, a crazy amount of contour lines go back Oh, I was going to say under chart setup too, we can change the orientation from course up, head up, and north up. I personally prefer north up. That's just me. I'll show you the um, quick draw thing in a second for those who want to see it. So, one of the cool things with um, there's your light sectors, by the way, with fishing charts is this massive amount of detail you get with your one foot bathymetric as you can see here in the Port Phillip Bay entrance for example just how detailed it is and of course the more you zoom in the more detail you get which is pretty cool if I go menu layers water depth shading I can select various depths that I want to highlight with a color so if I say I'm particularly interested in a, in a species of fish that is going to be in at least 20 meters of water so I will select a new depth range color will be purple the minimum depth is zero zero 18 meters to zero zero two two zero meters so between 18 and 22 meters it's going to be that purpley sort of color and all these ones i'll turn off so the only color i have is that one that i've selected whoops Okay, so now this purpley sort of color, if I go back to my map, go find some shallower waters. second mm -hmm. oops Shading is on, turn shallow shading off. It should be showing me that. Hmm. Is this contributed to by Quick Draw? Well, yes. So Quick Draw will overlay over either map it will overlay over your traditional navigation map or this fishing map so if i go menu quick draw contours now i don't have a card in i wonder if i can actually grab a card real quick do i have any floating around hmm. nope doesn't look like i do i thought i might have had a card i can chuck in so with quick draw you can display or not display any of your saved quick draws or ones that you're currently generating when they're on display i can go into my menu and have user contours so these are contours that i've created community contours so ones that you've downloaded from the active captain uh, contours and survey coloring so let's say I just want the ones that I'm doing. I'll turn those two off. I just have the user ones on. And if I press start recording, it will say insert memory card, which I don't have. 
So with recording, it's taking that sonar data and saving it. And if you have selected it to be displayed, it will also show it on the map. You can record data for your quick draw without it actually appearing on your map. If I go to manage, sorry, settings, I can change a few of my um, offsets. So, I wish I could show you that, but I can't at this stage, unfortunately. Bugger, that would have been good. Best to see that on the water, but yes, it is quite good. So, as you're driving along, you just go to your quick draw, put on display, and start recording with a blank SD card. Sorry about the focusing. With a blank SD card in the unit itself, and away you go. And then on your map screen, you will see him cruising along. If I just go home, go to my, what am I doing now? I'm going to go settings, system, simulator, setup, speed. I'm going to make the simulator boat do five knots. So now when we're back on our charts, and we zoom in. In theory, our little boat should be moving. He is. And whilst he's moving, I'm going to see if I've got a blank SD card floating around here somewhere. I thought I did have one. Talk amongst yourselves. just pinch this card out of the GPS map unit so let's chuck it in and see how we go hopefully uh, it's a software update card so that should be pretty cool all right so now if I go menu quick draw contours start recording Blah, 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 except you can now see our little map, a little dude over here. He's leaving our quick draw behind. And you can see a little circle coming around the boat. And that's indicating our coverage area based on our transducer beam. And you can also see the areas that we've created are highlighted green. I can turn that off by going to menu, quick draw, contours, settings, survey colouring off. Back to the boat. And now you can see um, it's no longer in green. Uh, you can see that as we're cruising along, that purple colour we selected in our depth range is now highlighted. So interesting. I don't know if I can make the little boat change. Navigate to, go to. No. I thought the simulator might be able to move him, but he doesn't care. He's just doing his own thing. Thinking of upgrading to the 8410 from the Echo Map 95 Plus running the GT51 would you recommend also would it be worthwhile adding the gt54 as well mainly fishing port phillip bay and western port bay and fairly close offshore well uh lee how are you mate thank you for your question uh, with and i'll get back to the echo map in a second guys um with the 8410 you have two transducer connection ports i, I actually have a an 8416 sitting just there, I can show you in a second. The 8410 has two transducer ports. It has an orange pin 12 connector and a blue pin 8, uh, sorry, an 8 pin blue connector. And the GT51 and the GT54 both utilize the 12 pin orange connector. And that's because they have side view elements inside those transducers. So you can only have one of those connected at a time. What you can do um, is pick the better of the two transducers for the side imaging's sake. 
So the GT54, for example, is a high frequency wide beam for its traditional sonar, and the GT51 is a medium frequency. The GT51 is 600 watt, the GT54 is 300 watt, 350 watt. Um, so the traditional elements are very different between them. So if you were fishing, say, predominantly in Port Phillip Bay, in the shallows, you could, say, chuck on a GT54 transducer, and that would give you the benefit of ultra-high frequency side imaging, which I will get to in a second, and high-wide traditional chirp. And then on the 8-pin connector, you could add a GT15, be it a transom mount or an in-hull or whatever, which is a 600 watt medium frequency, the same frequency that's out of that GT51. And that way you've got both bases kind of covered. And you can swap that principle around. If you like, Lee, shoot us a message on Facebook and I'll um, explain that in greater detail in a private message. Uh, so that, that's the quick draw function I should just uh, reiterate as our little boat's cruising along. Now, as we're cruising along, you can see he's highlighting over our traditional map and if I don't want to see that but I still want to keep recording I can go to my menu quick draw contours I've got a cat that's walking in front go on mate go oh don't sit there man you gotta keep walking go on you right there I can stop the display so I'm still recording but I've just turned the display off so now when I go back to my main screen, I don't have that on the screen anymore, but I am still recording. What are you what are you playing with, buddy? Go on. Go on. Go keep keep walking. Don't just sit there. <laughs> I'm trying to film here. <laughs> go on. Move your tush. Sorry about that, everyone. Alrighty, yeah. where was I? Let's go back to our home screen now. So that's hopefully a good indicator of the chart system. We also have sonar, and depending on the transducer you have, but they do come packaged with a GT54 transducer, you will have traditional, clear view, side view, and then you can see there's some pre-done combinations and this little arrow on the right hand side indicates that there's more data graphs and recordings of our sonar so if i go back and go traditional interestingly it defaults to a white background but i personally prefer blue so i'm going to change to how this looks by pressing menu going to sonar setup going to appearance color scheme blue now the one criticism I do have of the Echo Map series is the resolution. Uh, the resolution is fine, but it is nowhere near as good as what we see on the Echo Map Ultra, the GPS Map range, and especially the 8400 series. But it's price point. We do get a touchscreen system with physical buttons for a very respectable price. But here's our sonar, okay? So on our sonar, it shows us some decent uh, fish return arches, which you can see here. Being a high frequency wide beam chirp, these fish arches will be character um, cartoonishly bigger. Uh, but the target separation will be pretty good. So hopefully you can see that if I zoom in a little bit, you can see the actual... I'll just pause it for a sec you can see that the separation between the fish is pretty good in what would have been just a blurred screen with traditional sonar in particular with chirp we can pick up these individual returns i'll press the play button to keep on going and i'll shrink it back down so we have some information on our, on our screen here we have our depth water temperature our vessel speed the unit supply voltage and time and I can change all those and we have more data bars at the top which is to do with our um, waypoint 
So I must have a waypoint still set where it shows me my speed, my heading, my bearing, and how far off course I am. If I press menu, uh, nav, uh, what am I doing? Home. Do I have a waypoint set? I do. So we're going to cancel that. So we're going to go menu, stop navigation, home. Alright, now that bar's gone. Cool, so if I press menu, we can start to change a few things. I can change my gain, which is like your sensitivity. I can change it up or down or to some presets. Um, no, unfortunately, Matt, this has one transducer port available, which is the uh, orange 12 pin. 12 pin? Yeah, yeah, 12 pin. So there is quite a lot of transducers available for this particular unit up to 600 watt however um this one unfortunately you can only run a single transducer you can connect it up to external sonar modules to uh, get a few more but this is pretty much what you get although it's pretty good i must admit uh, we'll go back to our menu so that's our gain um beam width which is interesting being a chirp, I can run it in chirp mode or I can actually isolate a frequency. So chirp oscillates between a shallow, uh, sorry, a narrow beam and a wide beam and it just oscillates between them based on its frequency. So you can see it's really low frequency, which is 145 kilohertz all the way up to 230 kilohertz oscillates between 24 degrees and 16 degrees if i run it in chirp mode in chirp mode it will oscillate throughout the whole range uh menu not really not sure if simrad not sure if that's a question dude but happy to answer um all right cool we've got the zoom options too I really like the magnify option and I can select how much of a magnification so I can say times three and that gives me this little box here and I can zoom that little box when I'm done I can zoom that box over an area to have a closer look at it in whatever magnification I've set so that's pretty cool and you can see I can pinch and zoom that with my fingers as well so I can just grab an area Pinch and zoom and have a little look you see. If I'm done, I can pinch it away. That's a very cool feature. What other cool features can I show you? So... Showing our setup. We can have some on-screen controls such as our gain. Oops, go back to my sonar. So now I can set whatever these controls are going to be controlling. In this case, they're controlling my gain. So I can manually increase or decrease my gain on the fly or just run it in automatic. Menu, sonar, setup, on screen controls. I can also do it for range. So with range up here now, I can increase or decrease my range. You can see over here, it's going up and down. But we'll just leave it on automatic. I can actually just turn the whole thing off, the off screen. I can just leave off and then I don't have to worry about um, anything at the top. Our scroll speed I can set to automatic. So in automatic it will detect the boat speed based on your GPS and increase or decrease the scroll. However, that might not necessarily be the best for you if you're sitting, say, anchored in a river or on a spot lock on a trolling motor in a river and the water current is moving, your boat's not moving, so the GPS will think, oh yeah, cool, we're not moving, I won't bother displaying anything. So in those instances, you can go into manual mode and have the scroll speed increase or decreased. Cool, uh, menu, sonar setup. Under installation, we can just restore any defaults. If we stuff it all up, we can just go straight back to it. Under appearance, like you saw before, you can change the color scheme. I can put on an oscilloscope, which is pretty cool. I actually really like oscilloscopes. 
you can see this is our oscilloscope on the right hand side sorry about my focusing by the way it's mostly used for ice fishing nowadays but down the bottom you'll see a little number says 3.7 meters and that indicates how much of a coverage area your sonar cone has so i know that on my boat at this particular depth at this particular moment i've got 3.5 meters of coverage now if you divide that by two i can say it's 1.75 meters either side of my transducer so when i see a target on my sonar especially if it's a strong target I know that it's within 1.75 meters of my transducer. Sorry about the camera. So that's the oscilloscope. So now I set up, uh, go back, appearance, turn that off. Pick advanced, mostly used for deeper water. Basically, it indicates how many um, progressions of pixels per sonar returns. And in deeper water, it takes longer for the sonar to go down and come back. Uh, so you can slow the rate of that um, scroll as it waits for its sonar return. Fish symbols are back. We can now have fish symbols if you have kids on board. It's quite entertaining for them. Keep pressing the wrong button. And look, hey, um, it works for some people. I'm not going to yuck anyone's yum and say it's really bad. If this works for you, go for it. The only downside, of course, with fish ID is that you do lose information um, and you might be missing out on some stuff that's quite crucial plus it doesn't really further your knowledge all that much you know it's a good habit to get into learning how to read sonar and I know sonar can look really perplexing to a lot of people but practice makes perfect so I'm going to turn those off sonar setup let's go back appearance fish symbols off under advanced, we have interference, which is electrical interference, surface noise, as you'd suggest, any noise from the top of the water, color gain. Uh, I won't go too much into color gain. I've got other videos explain that. TVG, same thing. I'll put a link in this description below of the other videos that explain all these in better detail. All right, so that's traditional sonar. If I go back, uh, we have our clear view. Now this clear view is going to run in a higher frequency. You can see it running at 820 kilohertz. And this is looking directly underneath the boat. And the definition is very good. It's extremely good actually. So if you want to see what's directly beneath the boat in quite high detail, uh, this is the screen you'd be running. Fish come up as, a, as tiny little white dots, if anything at all sometimes. And of course, you're only going to see what's pretty much directly underneath the boat so um, you might miss out on a bit of information but if you're trying to go directly over a reef and to see what that reef structure looks like for habitat boom this is your screen I'll go into the menu real quick but you can change a bunch of stuff obviously contrast and brightness are the two big ones but um, pretty cool I will also mention too that you can scroll back highlight a target so say I really like that one. Press my little little target button which is at the top here. And that will save a waypoint where I had that cursor. So right there. Press my little play button to keep on keeping on. Alrighty, yeah, back. Side view. This is the one that everyone wants to know about. So this is a chirp modulated frequency again. You can see we're running at 1120 kilohertz or we call it 1.2 megahertz because it sort of fluctuates a little bit. With this higher frequency, you do lose range, so you're not going to get quite as far left or right, but your definition is very, very good. I won't say it's the best. Hummingbird still has this down pat, but it's a very, um, a very respectable second place. So the only letdown, of course, you get on this is the screen resolution isn't quite as good as the G. So you don't get the full advantage of that high frequency, but it's still very, very cool. Um, I can increase and decrease my range here, obviously. A really, a really cool feature I really like, if I go menu and I go view selection, I can select just one side. So I can just select it right, for example. So now my whole screen is just looking from the middle of the boat to the right. 
and that way I get to maximize my pixels and see things a little up close. So if you're cruising along a ledge or a bank or a river wall or something, and you're only interested in the right hand side, you can just display the right hand side um, and not worry about anything on the left. And it just means that you'll get a bit more out of your screen real estate. Uh, remember, this is only nine inches, and um, you know it's a, it's enough for most things, but certainly. It can look quite small when you have left and right, as you can see here. Once again, you have scroll back. So if you find something that was really cool, you can highlight it, put your cursor over it, press a little dropper marker, and boom, that's now saved. Cool, let's go back to our sonar screen. You can see we've got a couple of combinations. So I can go down to this one, which is a combination of all three some splits we also have connected up um, our well I'll show you the favorites one I'll show you the favorites so these favorite hotkeys I mentioned at the start they work a bit like this if I really like my traditional sonar a lot I can touch and hold this button and you can see shortcut key number one is saved let's say I also really like my side view I can save that. If I go back to my home screen, go to my charts, my fishing charts, that can be number three. And for the last one, I really like some of my combinations. So I'll go to my combo page and combo seven, which is my down, traditional, and mapping. Although it's looking kind of blurry at the moment, but we'll forgive them for that that could be number four and the cool thing is now you can just quickly isolate which ones you like the most just by pressing these buttons it just saves you going in and out of menus and it's good when you've got like gloves on and it's cold and you don't want to muck around with touch screen you can just hit the things that you want to see the most and be done with it you know uh, let's go back to our home screen. So under frequency, uh, frequently used, it will obviously show you the ones that you use the most often. So just pop up there. Under combos, I can create my own custom ones, obviously, by pressing this customize button. I can go add. Yeah, I really like this top bottom one. The top one I touch, I press sonar, traditional sonar. The bottom one I really like to be my sonar. I like my side view because it's nice and wide. And I really want to see more of my side view so I can scroll that bar up. Done. I want to call this one Tradish. Oh no. And side view. Done. Go home. Go to my combos. Traditional and side view, not that it fits it all in, but there it is. Boom. There we go. You can see there isn't a great deal of lag with these systems. They, they're not as fast as obviously the GPS map or other MFDs, but it, it's plenty quick enough. The screen is very bright. Um, contrast is not as good as some other brands. The Raymarine Element, for example does have a considerably better screen than this for its price point um, but it's pretty good under gauges obviously you can have all your instruments if you have engines plugged in for example that's wind engine information as if we're going to be running four engines on a boat this small uh, if you have it connected up to certain engines you can get engine warning uh, symbols as well which is cool. Panoptics. So panoptics is a whole different kettle of fish. Panoptics, there is a few transducers available, such as the PS30, uh, PS31, the PS60. Uh, then there's the live scope system, which has the LVS12 and the LVS32. Right. That's a lot. And that gives us our forward-facing real-time sonar. Uh, downward facing real time sonar is an option low resolution forward scan which gives us this 
quite rudimentary but long distance forward look that's mostly used for yachts uh, 3d so I can see what's happening around me in 3d underneath me in 3d as I move around with my little finger you can see that real view historical so what I've been over and then live scope so live scope is definitely where the party's at so this is the LVS32 you can see the beam is looking about 13 meters uh, forward and aft in the downward facing position if I press menu and go to sonar setup installation uh, orientation forward I can change it now to forward mode and now we're looking from the transducer back about 7 meters and forward about 25 meters and seeing some tree structures appear down there some fish swimming around I do like up in the corner you have this little icon of the boat and shows you the position of the transducer and the beam so as you rotate the beam you can see which way you're facing uh, and then we have perspective mode which is the new horizontal version of the transducer which allows us to see in real time in a big forward facing fan I can obviously rotate around if you're interested in running a live scope I highly recommend using a live scope pole um, I highly recommend a brand called live for it you can certainly hit us up in the comments if you want to know more about them radio what have I forgot if I forgot anything people if you been watching this video and you think shit I wish you would talk about that um, what have I forgot active captain is a whole a whole big thing I'm, I'm gonna avoid that because it's huge yes you can run your autopilot and it can default as an autopilot control screen which is pretty cool um, go across pages you can have it obviously connected into your NEMA 2000 audio system in this case it's a fusion so I can control my audio very cool actually if I go back and just go to my chart page for example if I go what am I going to do okay, menu edit overlays I can turn my bottom bar on I can have it my controlling my trolley motor if I have a force trolley motor a compass tape if you want to see um, your heading or media bar so if I go to media bar and go back you can see this little bar down the bottom uh, showcases what's being playing I can change the volume up and down mute it Ooh, go back change track so or I can go full screen to then go through all my other options all right I've got some comments here a comparison between it and the GPS map series well that's um yeah I can do that I'll just go setting system simulator on all right so it's not going to be a very fair comparison because what I have here I have a GPS map 8416 in the background and this echo map 95 sitting here the big difference you'll first see is the quality of the screen these are a full HD um, 1920 by uh, 1920 by 1080p and they're 1500 nits brightness so these are a very crisp rich resolution they're an exceptional resolution to be honest um, certainly nothing wrong there and I'll just press that button to see if it does something I just knocked the power out of my uh, little echo map there by mistake so I'll just plug that back in. Try and doing this one-handed. I mean, the big difference between the Echo map and the GPS map is, I mean, pretty much everything is turbocharged on the GPS map. Their sonar is uh, considerably more powerful. You can obviously run multiple one kilowatt transducers on the GPS map you can do a bit more with it not much more the the echo map is pretty good 
um, but certainly you can do a bit more on the GPS map side of things. Uh, everything just looks a lot richer and cleaner. You can do a bit more when it comes to things like radar. There's more in charting options. Um, you obviously have a whole bunch more of inputs and things. So if we go to my video, you can see here. Uh, go to my home page. Oh, I've unplugged it. I've got a little Nintendo 64 plugged in <laughs> to my GPS map series. So there's a lot more you can do. You can, you can have engine interfacing and blah, blah, blah. Price difference wise, um, that's a good question. The price is very, very uh, elastic with with the Echo Map series. And one of the reasons why, I mean, the big box stores really push these a lot. And a lot of the pricing is determined by them. Um, ballpark on the 95 with everything is about 1700 and something bucks. I'll have to double check and, and put all that out in a message below because I haven't got my price guide in front of me or my laptop. So um, watch this space. But for an Echo Map series uh, with the same GT54 transducer that we're playing with, is anywhere between sort of like that $1,300 and $1,700 mark. I'll double check myself on that too, though. Um, can't quite remember. But, yeah, to step into the GPS map is a considerable jump. I did it again. I knocked the bloody power. I've only just got the power sitting in, so don't blame it. Um, one thing I will do while it is unlocked is I'll press the quick release. So to release this, there's a little tab on the top just here. So if I, sorry about the camera, if I grab that, let it focus again, and it will just quick release out, and that's the unit itself. It's not much thicker than like one of the original tablets from back in the day, and I'm getting my fingers all over it, but anyway. And then what you're left is just this multi-pin at the very back, and um, included with it is a little lanyard cover that just goes over it. To protect those pins and that goes off there's a couple little locator tabs down the bottom here um, the menu is not the same it's similar so I'll uh, we'll try to fire it back up again for you you'll see the menu on the 84 series here which is this one you can see has your cluster in the center and then your um, various pages on the right hand side so basically it allows you to see everything at once whereas the echo map series shows you just one page and then you have to press on that page to then go in to get the rest of the options um just hang on two secs i'm just going to plug it the power pack in So the quick release I do admit is pretty cool on these Echo Maps. It's it's quite sturdy and strong. I know there's been some people that have had theirs fall out, but I've never had one fall out. Uh, but it does pop in and out quite easy, which is cool. If you are flush mounting these, it's a little bit trickier. These trim tabs up the top come off, and then there's small screw holes in each of the corner for you to mount. So you'll see here, this is the the menu difference. So on the Echo Map series, you have charts, sonar, combos, sort of in the center cluster. And on the right-hand side, those are down, sorry, on the um, GPS Map series, they're on the side. So to see all your charting options, you have to touch it, and then it sort of explodes into a new menu, showing you a few others. Whereas on this one, when I highlight it up top here, it then shows it all. Um, one is not better than the other, it's just different. They both have down the bottom, you know, nav info, home, mark, menu. You can see that down the bottom. You have a few more in the GPS map series. You've got SOS functionality. Uh, you've got autopilot controls in the very bottom corner there. Your info pages. So you can see that little info page, there's a little red line above it. If I press that, I can see my warning manager. If I touch that, it can tell me all the warnings that's come up, when, 
what they were. I can clear them. Okay. So it's a it's certainly just a more complete system in that regard. Um, entry to the GPS map series, it would be the 752 XSV, which is a, a 7 inch system preloaded with the same mapping that's on this. And that unit is about the $1,400 mark. No, more than that, sorry. It's about $1,700 mark without a transducer. So the GPS map range don't come packaged with transducers. And the reason they don't come packaged with transducers is because of the vast array of different transducer options that are available. So if you're building a boat with a 16-inch screen, and Phil, yeah, sorry, this is a... 8416 so if you're building a boat with a 16 inch screen there's a good likelihood that you're going to want a through hole transducer and a through hole transducer comes in low medium and high in chirp and a high wide in chirp they come in bronze and stainless steel in the through hole variants in zero degree 12 degree and 20 degree so because there's so many different variables um, for boats that often use the GPS map series, they don't come packaged with transducers. But that's a good thing too, because it does mean that um, people like myself, outfitters who sort of specialize in this stuff, we, we can sit with clients and really tailor a transducer that's perfect for their needs. And obviously the GPS map series um, and other MFDs from other brands in particular have quite a large range of transducers that you can pick from. Whereas the Echo Map is definitely targeted more for the uh, the more modest boating options, so the people who are generally going to have smaller trailer boats and are generally fishing in waters about 30 metres and less. So that's why they're packaged with the GT54 because it's a pretty good all-round transducer. That being said, you can put other transducers and there are through-hole transducer options and in-hole transducers. So you can still select a lot, but the reason they come packaged with that one is because most people in that area, that transducer is um, is quite economical. So hopefully that makes sense too. Obviously with the GPS map stuff, there's, there's camera options, there's radar options, there's um, thermal imaging, data interfacing, you name it, it can sort of do it. Um, Whereas the Echo Map is a little bit more subdued. Uh, I do like that the covers are pretty robust. They're pretty easy to put on. It's a uh, bail mount, so it can pivot up and down, but it can't rotate. It just has these little knobs on the side here to adjust it. Um, what else can I tell you about these two systems? If you do have any questions, feel free to shoot it in the little comment section below and I'll be happy to answer. Otherwise, uh, hopefully you can shoot me an email. So yeah, there you go. So that's an overview of the 95, um, Ecomap 95 UHD from Garmin and a, a, a small preview in a brief look at the comparison with a GPS map 8400 series over there. So thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Oh, what's this question? So main practical difference is screen quality for trailer boat fish as ever. Um, yes Matt, for trailer boat applications, for most anglers, the echo map is going to suffice quite comfortably. Um, the reason why we do see people migrate over to the 8400 series or consider going to a GPS map series is perhaps they're trying to future proof themselves somewhat or they want a higher quality screen. The, the resolution difference is, is, is quite significant. And that's not to say this is bad. That's just to emphasize how good that is. Um, but still, dollar for dollar, they're an exceptional unit. Uh, in my opinion, the Raymarine Axiom similar. Uh, Axiom is a good unit. 
um, the Axiom is a very understated system, and I quite like them a lot. The Axiom is a, and I had, I've got one here, I've just disconnected it. Um, the Axiom is a quad core processor that runs on Android, so it's a really stable operating system. And its sonar modulator is particularly good. What lets the Raymarine Axiom down somewhat is two things. Its transducer selection is a little bit more muted, um, which does make it difficult to really hone in the best transducer for you, unless you're running into the larger Raymarine Axiom stuff. So if you're running an Axiom Pro, for example, then yes, there's a lot of transducers you can choose from, and they produce a pretty good image. The side vision and down vision, I keep forgetting everyone's names, the side vision and down vision on the Raymarine is fine. It's not great. I don't think they're expecting it to be great. I don't think Raymarine was trying to compete heavily with Hummingbird, Simrad, Lawrence, Garmin. Um, they do have their 3D called Real Vision, which is fine, but all of those are definitely in their infancy, and I'd imagine would get better. Raymarine does have a really good side vision in their Element series called the Hypervision, which runs at 1.2 megahertz, the same as this guy here, and it's great. Unfortunately, it's only available on the Element, and we've been asking Raymarine for over a year now whether they can bring that hypervision to the axiom range and i'm told it's on the to-do list i just don't know how far away it is so um to answer your question my opinion on the raymarine axiom is similar um the axiom unfortunately can't do as much as these guys the uh the 8400 series is definitely one of the most capable systems that's on the market and that has ever been on the market. Um, but the Axiom is still a very good system. Yep. It would come down, I would often say to people, uh, to what you find most comfortable to use. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how good a system is. If you can't use it, it really doesn't matter. So, if there's a system out there that's better than this Rain Marine, sorry, than this Garmin Echo Map, but you found this Echo Map a lot easier to use, um, then you'd go this. Uh, Ryan asks, uh, what is your opinion of the 1120 kilohertz and the lower resolution screen? I feel it needs a higher resolution screen to take advantage. And, bugger, I knew it would restart. Um, yeah, you're on the money with that, Ryan. Uh, I'll show you once this restarts. So, when the ultra-high-frequency sonar came out from Garmin, it was the GCV20 module, and uh, it was a separate black box designed to plug in with the GPS map series. Uh, and that was cool because the GPS map series has a good quality screen. They then released the Echo Map Ultra range, and the Ultra range, which is still available, has that same high frequency transducer in it as well, but it has a higher quality screen. And now we have uh, that same tech, and they pushed it into what was their Echo Map Plus series. So the Echo Maps has has gone from like leap to leap to leap, and every year it's added a whole new thing. So oh, let's go to our settings, system simulator on, turn our simulator on. So I know this is just a simulator, but it's the best we got at the moment. So we'll go side view. So yeah, running at this 1100 and hopefully that focuses. Running in at that 1120 kilohertz or 1.12 megahertz. Um, is curtailed a little bit compared to your a higher quality screen that you might see on the Echo Map Ultras or the GPS Map Series. And you can see for a comparison, 
that's running the uh, same 1120 on this screen and so on this one too and this one while still fuzzy in some areas is a shitload better resolution than this so one of the little tips I was mentioning before is is going into the menu and changing the selection on the view from left to right to just like one side and that now utilizes the whole screen and therefore more pixels um, to create a better image so that, that's certainly one little trick and you can change the color up and contrast too so if I go to um, sonar setup go to color scheme and go to amber a bit brighter and then I might go to my menu go to my brightness Turn up just oh, it's already maxed. Put it high. Go to my contrast, maybe up a little bit. So, there's a little few tricks you can do to definitely coach it out and stretch that um, quality a little bit more. And that looks pretty good now. It's certainly not as good as that. And I haven't, I haven't mucked, I keep hitting the damn power. I haven't mucked around with the settings on that yet. And admittedly, it is just a simulator, but that's all we've got at this stage. Um, so to have that quality on this is not going to happen, but we can definitely tweak this a little bit to get it into a better quality. I'll, I'll let it load and I'll do that again. I'll just make sure not to touch the power cable again. Uh, the Lowrance, well, it depends on which Lowrance. What Lowrance? Lowrance has done... Uh, a pretty good job recently in some respects what they did is um, change out the elements in their side I should say so brief history the Lowrance structure scan the LSS 1 which was a little short tucker about that big it only lived for about a year then they introduced the LSS 2 which was a much longer 20, uh, 28 centimeter transducer, and that was around for a long time. Then they released the total scan transducer, and that had the LSS2 elements and the 83200 traditional sonar elements in one. I know I'm sort of going on a story here. After the total scan, they then released their active imaging 3-in-1 transducer and 2-in-1 transducer. And the difference with that one is that they use the elements out of their structure scan 3D transducer, just without the 3D componentry and without the module box. And that has given the um, resolution a bit of a bump. So this, the structure scan from Lowrance still runs at 455 and 800 kilohertz. Uh, which is which is lower than these sort of bigger megahertz sort of ones, but it, it actually produces a, a pretty decent image. And being that lower frequency, you do get further range. So if I go into oh, got to put on simulator. Go back to my side view menu. Sonar setup. Advanced. See so if there's anything I can do to kind of make it a bit more fancy pants, but not really. No. So, um, how does it compare with the Lorance in that regard? I would say they're both particularly good. Um, the cool thing I like about the Lowrance Simrad packages with the active imaging transducer is a feature called Fish Reveal, which is your, it combines your traditional sonar and clear view sonar. So it gives you this high frequency bottom, but then the fish arches from your traditional sonar and that, um, Lawrence and Simrad are the only two that have that technology. And that's pretty good. So, very even keel. 
um, the Lawrence and the Lawrence Elite Ti that is, and the Simrad Go series and the Echo Map series are really close competitors. You know, almost pound for pound in a lot of ways. And, and that's that whole adage that I was mentioning earlier, that it does come down more often than not to what you find more comfortable. And it can be something simple too, like the quick release is different on this compared to other brands. So you might like that, the fact that this quick release is nice and easy. Um, the Lowrance has a, a pretty solid operating system that's been around for a long time. So... A lot of people are familiar with it, but yeah, much for muchness. So there you go, guys. Um, any other questions that people might might have? There's no such thing as a bad question. Uh, I can be very brutally honest and um, and unbiased. Everything has pros and cons. As my granny used to say, there's a lid for every pot. Huh. But otherwise, I'll um, I'll shut it off there and let you get back to your lives. So, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you do have any questions and you would like to know anything more in particular about these, you're welcome to shoot us a message over at Moose Marine, and uh, more than happy to get back to you in that regards. Obviously, if you want pricing information about packages we can do, more than happy to do that as well. We've just released re-released our lockdown catalog uh, which is on our facebook page and our instagram and all the other fun stuff that i can send you a copy of um but yeah thank you very much for watching i hope you've learned something and if you have any questions you know where we are until next time have a great weekend and we'll see you later